So I figured out how to make gluten-free pasta dough, which then opens up an entire new world for me. I can make gluten-free lasagna sheets, as I have shown you last week, or I can also make now gluten-free, gluten-free, free, gluten-free, gluten-free gluten ravioli. So today I'm gonna make gluten-free ravioli. So last week I showed you how I'm gonna make the pasta dough and I experimented with a different flour combination. So I'm gonna go and walk you through it just in case you missed last week's episode. I'm gonna weigh 160 gram of millet flour, 80 gram of sweet rice flour, 80 grams of tapioca starch, and 80 grams of potato starch. So here's my flour combination. I'm also gonna add one teaspoon of salt. And I want to add now four eggs and two egg yolks. And I'm going to separate now two eggs. And I'm going to mix now my ingredients. I'm going to like normally to put a mat down just to make sure the dough doesn't get stuck all on the kitchen counter. And I'm going to knead the dough now. The dough is a little bit wetter than I would like it to be. So I'm going to add a little bit of millet flour. And I use millet flour because it has a better flavor. Now I don't have to knead this dough as long. From what I understand, if you make real pasta dough, as in pasta dough with a glutinous flour, um, you have to knead it much longer because of the gluten. But since I don't have any gluten in my dough, I don't have to knead it that long. There's definitely advantages of baking or cooking gluten-free. While I'm going to let my pasta dough rest, I'm going to start making the filling. For the filling, I'm going to have about 400 grams of spinach. Now, I have here some frozen spinach, which, to be honest, is a little bit easier to make. So I'm going to defrost now 400 grams of it. Okay, it's about 400 grams. Well, 427, but who's counting? So here's my defrosted spinach. I can also use my cheesecloth or what I use normally to strain my almond milk. Okay, this is a much drier spinach. I'm gonna add now, based on the recipe, one pound of ground beef, which is about 500 grams. Two eggs. The recipe is also asking for 500 grams of ricotta cheese. So here's my ricotta cheese. And you can see how much liquid is in there. So I certainly want to strain all the excess liquid and now I'm going to add that back to my eggs and my ground beef. I'm going to mix it. You can use a spoon for it. I normally like to do it quick with my hand because it's easier. I want to add now some salt, some pepper and a little bit of garlic. So I'm going to have here my garlic and I'm going to use two of the gloves. Normally I like to use a lot of garlic, but I think for the ravioli, I do want the ricotta cheese to come out. So I'm going to be a little bit conservative, at least conservative for me, with my garlic consumption. I never will win the prize of most organized and cleanest chef. I'm going to use my garlic press. And some of it is still a little bit too big, so I might chop it. And I'm going to add now my garlic to my mixture. I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of salt. 
I'm also going to use some pepper and about half a cup of grated parmesan. So here's my parmesan. I'm going to cut a little bit so I can grate it. And I'm going to add now my grated parmesan to the filling. The recipe says to add a little bit of parsley, but honestly, I do not want to add some parsley. I think the flavor in itself is pretty rich, and I'm not quite sure if the parsley is going to add more to it. Now it's time to assemble my ravioli. So I should start with rolling out the dough. I never have tried this before. As you know, a lot of my recipes are experimentations, and you can figure out with me if I'm going to succeed at it. Here's my pasta dough. And it's now much drier. And that's normally from just letting it sit a little bit. So I'm going to roll it out. Still a little bit sticky. I would use rice flour or millet flour if the dough starts to stick. And I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to measure the ravioli a little bit with a little bit of an imprint. I'm going to measure a tablespoon of filling and put it into the center of my ravioli. Then I'm going to flip half of it over. And I'm going to use my small little ravioli maker. And here's my ravioli. Yay! I made my first raviolis. So here are my finished raviolis and I put them in the fridge overnight. Certainly I covered them just to make sure they don't absorb too much moisture. And I'm going to try to cook them now. Let's see how they turn out. So I'm going to start boiling my water before I'm going to add my ravioli. I'm going to add some olive oil and I'm going to add also some salt. I'm going to add about a teaspoon, but you can definitely add less salt. So the water is right now in a soft boiled state. So you see a little bit of those bubbles on the bottom of the pot. And I do want to wait for it to come to a rolling boil. Except if I'm impatient and super hungry, then I'm going to add the raviolis right now. It's getting there, it's getting there, it's getting there. The water is starting boiling. Please, please boil. I'm hungry. Eh, good enough. So this ravioli is a little bit damaged and I want to see what happens when I cook it. Is my ravioli going to explode or, I don't know, create a mess? So here's a small little perfect ravioli. I'm going to add it as well. So raviolis are supposed to float when they are done. Come on, cook a little bit and float a little bit faster. Never make do cooking experiences while you are hungry. Just saying. Even if the ravioli are starting to float now, I'm going to cook them for a few more minutes just to make sure they're nicely cooked. So that happens to a ravioli when a ravioli meets a naju. I have no clue how to fish them out, but I have that from my steer fryer. So I'm going to use this to fish out my ravioli. So this is the ravioli I damaged at the bottom. And you can see how the dough expanded when it was cooking and filled the hole. Well, that's kind of handy. Here's my homemade gluten-free ravioli. Mm. I'm going to put a little bit of a tomato sauce over it and it should be delicious. I hope at least. What a flavor. Oh, it's pretty good. It doesn't really taste gluten-free. I don't think anybody would think it is gluten-free. So the only thing what I would improve on that is that I didn't use my pasta machine. Because the dough, when I hand rolled it, it's a little bit uneven. So I have some parts of my ravioli to be thick and I have some parts which are a little bit too thin. So next time you want to have a pasta party or a ravioli party, actually, you know what? Get all your friends to come over and help you making raviolis because it is actually a fair amount of work. Which also explains now why raviolis are so expensive when you buy them. I always was wondering, why are raviolis so expensive? Because there are a lot of work to make. 
I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.